In our last video, we learned that living things are highly organized and structured. We talk about the different levels of biological organization. If you haven't still watched our video about the different levels of biological organization, you may pause this video to watch it. The link is posted on the description box. In this video, we are going to study in detail the simplest level on the levels of biological organization, which is the cell. We are going to learn its different parts and their functions. Are you ready to learn? Let's go! Agamazing! Kumusta ka? Ito si Sir Bas ng Sir Bas TV. Ako ang makakasama mo sa pagtuklas ng mga kaalaman tungkol sa agham o science. Aalamin natin ang mga iba't ibang konsepto na may kinalaman sa matter, living things and their environment, force, motion and energy, at earth and space. Handa ka na bang maging agamazing? Kung oo, kunin na ang iyong ballpen at papel at sama-sama tayong maging agamazing. By the way, kung hindi ka pala kapag-subscribe sa aking channel, i-click lamang ang subscribe button at notification bell para maging updated ka sa mga susunod kong uploads. I-like and share na rin ang video nito. All living things on earth, big or small, are made up of cells. Cells are the smallest living part of an organism. It is the basic unit of life that can perform all activities associated with life like growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. Every living thing is made up of one or more cells. If a living thing is made up of one cell, they are called unicellular. Examples of unicellular organisms are bacteria, amoeba, and paramecium. On the other hand, if they are made up of more than one cells, they are called multicellular. Examples are humans, plants, and animals. Cells are too small to be seen by the naked eye. But thanks to the invention of a microscope, scientists were now able to study it in detail. The first person to describe cells using a microscope was Robert Hooke. When he examined a very thin slice of cork, he noticed structures that look like small, empty rooms. It reminded him of small rooms found in a monastery. Thus, he named these structures cells, wherein cell is from the word cellulae which means small rooms. Let us now explore the different parts of a cell. The two type of cells that you are going to encounter in this video are animal and plant cells. Whether animal or plant cells and even other organisms like bacteria share three basic parts. These are cell membrane, nucleus, and the cytoplasm. Cell membrane is also known as plasma membrane. It is the outer covering of the cell which covers the surface of the cell. It is like a security guard that controls the kind of substance that enters and exits the cells. It also protects the cell from the outside environment. Without the plasma membrane, any substance can go in and out the cell. The cell may be affected by the exit of needed substances or entrance of unneeded or poisonous substances that may lead to the death of the cell. The next part is the nucleus. The nucleus is the most noticeable part of the cell. It appears circular or oval in shape. It contains the deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA which is the hereditary material that carries genetic material in all living things. It is called as the brain of the cell because it controls all the activities occurring inside the cell. The cytoplasm is the jelly-like substance that can be found inside the cell. It contains the organelles of the cells that are outside of the nucleus. Organelles are specialized part of the cell. They are like little organs of the cell. Each organelle carries out a specific function inside the cell. Let us now explore the different organelles that can be found in the cell as well their function. First, we have mitochondrion or mitochondria in its plural form. The mitochondrion acts as the powerhouse of the cell since it releases the energy needed for cell activities. 
they supply energy by undergoing cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a process that produces adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. Next, we have ribosomes. Ribosomes are the protein factories of the cells. They are the tiny dots that can be seen in the cell. They carry out the instructions coming from the nucleus to synthesize proteins. Next, we have nucleolus. Nucleolus is the prominent round structure in the nucleus. It is where ribosomes are produced. Endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum because it appears rough because of the presence of ribosomes. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the production of various proteins in the cell, antibodies, insulin, as well as transportation of proteins into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. On the other hand, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum appears to be smooth because its surface does not contain ribosomes. It is involved in the synthesis of lipids and carbohydrates that are used to build the cell membrane. Next, we have Golgi bodies or apparatus. The proteins manufactured in the endoplasmic reticulum is transported to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is called the mailman of the cell because it is responsible for transporting, modifying, and packaging proteins and lipids into vesicles for delivery to targeted destination in the cells where they are needed. The next organelle are vacuoles. Vacuoles are coined as the storage rooms of the cell. Vacuoles are membrane-bound structure which main function is for storage such as food, water, and even waste. Lysosomes Lysosomes are known as the suicide bags of the cell. Lysosomes act as the waste disposal system of the cell by digesting or breaking down the trash or unneeded materials in the cytoplasm. Next are centrioles. Centrioles are cylindrical structures which play an important role in cell division. These structures can only be found on animal cell. Cell division is important in animal cells because it enables the organisms to produce new cells needed for the production of new organisms, growth, and maintenance. The next structures are parts that can only be found in plant cells. First is chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain the pigment chlorophyll that captures energy from sunlight for photosynthesis. Therefore, the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. It is the process through which plants produce their own food. Animal cells has no chloroplast. Thus, animals cannot make their own food. The second is cell wall. Cell wall is the outer covering positioned next to the cell membrane in most plant cells, fungi, bacteria, algae, and some archaea. Plants have cell walls made of cellulose that protect, support, and give them shape. And those are the different parts of a cell and their functions. In summary, the cell is the basic unit of life. It is made of different organelles that function together to perform a specific function. In our next video, we are going to learn the difference between a plant and animal cell. Let us have another look on the different parts of a cell, specifically plants and animals. To test your understanding of our lesson, please answer this short activity. You can check your answers at the end of this video. Do not forget to comment on your scores with the hashtag AgAmazing. See you on our next science lesson.